June 17, Judgment During Jehoram's Reign During Jehoram's reign, the Edomites revolted against Judah and crowned their own king. So Jehoram went out with his full army and all his chariots. The Edomites surrounded him and his chariot commanders, but he went out at night and attacked them under cover of darkness. Even so, Edom has been independent from Judah to this day. The town of Libna also revolted about that same time. All this happened because Jehoram had abandoned the Lord, the God of his ancestors. He had built pagan shrines in the hill country of Judah and had led the people of Jerusalem and Judah to give themselves to pagan gods and to go astray. Then Elijah the prophet wrote Jehoram this letter. This is what the Lord, the God of your ancestor David, says. You have not followed the good example of your father Jehoshaphat or your grandfather King Asa of Judah. Instead, you have been as evil as the kings of Israel. You have led the people of Jerusalem and Judah to worship idols, just as King Ahab did in Israel. And you have even killed your own brothers, men who were better than you. So now the Lord is about to strike you, your people, your children, your wives, and all that is yours with a heavy blow. You yourself will suffer with a severe intestinal disease that will get worse each day until your bowels come out. Then the Lord stirred up the Philistines and the Arabs, who lived near the Ethiopians, to attack Jehoram. They marched against Judah, broke down its defenses, and carried away everything of value in the royal palace, including the king's sons and his wives. Only his youngest son, Ahaziah, was spared. After all this, the Lord struck Jehoram with the severe intestinal disease. The disease grew worse and worse, and at the end of two years, it caused his bowels to come out and he died in agony. His people did not build a great funeral fire to honor him, as they had done for his ancestors. Jehoram was thirty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. No one was sorry when he died. They buried him in the city of David, but not in the royal cemetery. Summary of Jehoram's Reign The rest of the events in Jehoram's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. When Jehoram died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then his son Ahaziah became the next king. Ahaziah rules in Judah. Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, began to rule over Judah in the twelfth year of the reign of Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel. Ahaziah was twenty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem one year. His mother was Athaliah, a granddaughter of King Omri of Israel. Ahaziah followed the evil example of King Ahab's family. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as Ahab's family had done, for he was related by marriage to the family of Ahab. Ahaziah joined Joram, son of Ahab, the king of Israel, in his war against King Haziel of Aram at Ramoth Gilead. When the Arameans wounded King Joram in the battle, he returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds he had received at Ramoth. Because Joram was wounded, King Ahaziah of Judah went to Jezreel to visit him. Then the people of Jerusalem made Ahaziah, Jehoram's youngest son, their next king, since the marauding bands who came with the Arabs had killed all the older sons. So Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, reigned as king of Judah. Ahaziah was twenty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem one year. His mother was Athaliah, a granddaughter of King Omri. Ahaziah also followed the evil example of King Ahab's family, for his mother encouraged him in doing wrong. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as Ahab's family had done. They even became his advisors after the death of his father, and they led him to ruin. Following their evil advice, Ahaziah joined King Joram, the son of King Ahab of Israel, in his war against King Haziel of Aram at Ramoth-Gilead. When the Arameans wounded Joram in the battle, he returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds he had received at Ramoth. Because Joram was wounded, King Ahaziah of Judah went to Jezreel to visit him. But God had decided that this visit would be Ahaziah's downfall. While he was there, Ahaziah went out with Joram to meet Jehu, son of Nimshi, whom the Lord had appointed to destroy the dynasty of Ahab. Jehu anointed king of Israel. 
Meanwhile, Elisha the prophet had summoned a member of the group of prophets. Get ready to travel, he told him, and take this flask of olive oil with you. Go to Ramoth Gilead and find Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nimshi. Call him into a private room away from his friends and pour the oil over his head. Say to him, This is what the Lord says, I anoint you to be the king over Israel. Then open the door and run for your life. So the young prophet did as he was told and went to Ramoth Gilead. When he arrived there, he found Jehu sitting around with the other army officers. I have a message for you, commander, he said. For which one of us? Jehu asked. For you, commander, he replied. So Jehu left the others and went into the house. Then the young prophet poured the oil over Jehu's head and said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I anoint you king over the Lord's people Israel. You are to destroy the family of Ahab, your master. In this way, I will avenge the murder of my prophets and all the Lord's servants who were killed by Jezebel. The entire family of Ahab must be wiped out. I will destroy every one of his male descendants, slave and free alike, anywhere in Israel. I will destroy the family of Ahab, as I destroyed the families of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and of Baasha, son of Ahijah. Dogs will eat Ahab's wife Jezebel at the plot of land in Jezreel, and no one will bury her. Then the young prophet opened the door and ran. Jehu went back to his fellow officers, and one of them asked him, What did that madman want? Is everything all right? You know how a man like that babbles on, Jehu replied. You're hiding something, they said. Tell us. So Jehu told them, He said to me, This is what the Lord says. I have anointed you to be king over Israel. Then they quickly spread out their cloaks on the bare steps and blew the ram's horn, shouting, Jehu is king. Jehu kills Joram and Ahaziah. So Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, son of Nimshi, led a conspiracy against King Joram. Now Joram had been with the army at Ramoth-Gilead, defending Israel against the forces of King Haziel of Aram. But King Joram was wounded in the fighting and returned to Jezreel to recover from his wounds. So Jehu told the men with him, If you want me to be king, don't let anyone leave town and go to Jezreel to report what we have done. Then Jehu got into a chariot and rode to Jezreel to find King Joram, who was lying there wounded. King Ahaziah of Judah was there too, for he had gone to visit him. The watchman on the tower of Jezreel saw Jehu and his company approaching. So he shouted to Joram, I see a company of troops coming. Send out a rider to ask if they are coming in peace, King Joram ordered. So a horseman went out to meet Jehu and said, The king wants to know if you are coming in peace. Jehu replied, What do you know about peace? Fall in behind me. The watchman called out to the king. The messenger has met them, but he's not returning. So the king sent out a second horseman. He rode up to them and said, The king wants to know if you come in peace. Again Jehu answered, What do you know about peace? Fall in behind me. The watchman exclaimed, The messenger has met them, but he isn't returning either. It must be Jehu son of Nimshi, for he's driving like a madman. Quick, get my chariot ready, King Joram commanded. Then King Joram of Israel and King Ahaziah of Judah rode out in their chariots to meet Jehu. They met him at the plot of land that had belonged to Naboth of Jezreel. King Joram demanded, Do you come in peace, Jehu? Jehu replied, How can there be peace as long as the idolatry and witchcraft of your mother Jezebel are all around us? Then King Joram turned the horses around and fled, shouting to King Ahaziah, Treason, Ahaziah! But Jehu drew his bow and shot Joram between the shoulders. The arrow pierced his heart, and he sank down dead in his chariot. Jehu said to Bidkar, his officer, Throw him into the plot of land that belonged to Naboth of Jezreel. Do you remember when you and I were riding along behind his father Ahab? The Lord pronounced this message against him. I solemnly swear that I will repay him here on this plot of land, says the Lord, for the murder of Naboth and his sons that I saw yesterday. So throw him out on Naboth's property, just as the Lord said. When King Ahaziah of Judah saw what was happening, he fled along the road to Beth Hagen. Jehu rode after him, shouting, Shoot him too! So they shot Ahaziah in his chariot at the ascent of Gur, near Ibliam. He was able to go on as far as Megiddo, but he died there. His servants took him by chariot to Jerusalem, where they buried him with his ancestors in the city of David. Ahaziah had become king over Judah in the eleventh year of the reign of Joram, son of Ahab.
the death of Jezebel. When Jezebel the queen mother heard that Jehu had come to Jezreel, she painted her eyelids and fixed her hair and sat at a window. When Jehu entered the gate of the palace, she shouted at him, Have you come in peace, you murderer? You're just like Zimri, who murdered his master. Jehu looked up and saw her at the window and shouted, Who is on my side? And two or three eunuchs looked out at him. Throw her down, Jehu yelled. So they threw her out the window, and her blood spattered against the wall and on the horses, and Jehu trampled her body under his horse's hoofs. Then Jehu went into the palace and ate and drank. Afterward, he said, Someone go and bury this cursed woman, for she is the daughter of a king. But when they went out to bury her, they found only her skull, her feet, and her hands. When they returned and told Jehu, he stated, This fulfills the message from the Lord, which he spoke through his servant Elijah from Tishbe. At the plot of land in Jezreel, dogs will eat Jezebel's body. Her remains will be scattered like dung on the plot of land in Jezreel so that no one will be able to recognize her. Jehu Kills Ahab's Family Ahab had seventy sons living in the city of Samaria. So Jehu wrote letters and sent them to Samaria, to the elders and officials of the city, and to the guardians of King Ahab's sons. He said, The king's sons are with you, and you have at your disposal chariots, horses, a fortified city, and weapons. As soon as you receive this letter, select the best qualified of your master's sons to be your king, and prepare to fight for Ahab's dynasty. But they were paralyzed with fear and said, We've seen that two kings couldn't stand against this man. What can we do? So the palace and city administrators, together with the elders and the guardians of the king's sons, sent this message to Jehu. We are your servants and will do anything you tell us. We will not make anyone king. Do whatever you think is best. Jehu responded with a second letter. If you are on my side and are going to obey me, bring the heads of your master's sons to me at Jezreel by this time tomorrow. Now the seventy sons of the king were being cared for by the leaders of Samaria, where they had been raised since childhood. When the letter arrived, the leaders killed all seventy of the king's sons. They placed their heads in baskets and presented them to Jehu at Jezreel. A messenger went to Jehu and said, They have brought the heads of the king's sons. So Jehu ordered, Pile them in two heaps at the entrance of the city gate and leave them there until morning. In the morning he went out and spoke to the crowd that had gathered around them. You are not to blame, he told them. I am the one who conspired against my master and killed him. But who killed all these? You can be sure that the message of the Lord that was spoken concerning Ahab's family will not fail. The Lord declared through his servant Elijah that this would happen. Then Jehu killed all who were left of Ahab's relatives living in Jezreel, and all his important officials, his personal friends, and his priests. So Ahab was left without a single survivor. Then Jehu set out for Samaria. Along the way, while he was at beth Echad of the shepherds, he met some relatives of King Ahaziah of Judah. Who are you? he asked them. And they replied, We are relatives of King Ahaziah. We are going to visit the sons of King Ahab and the sons of the queen mother. Take them alive, Jehu shouted to his men. And they captured all forty-two of them and killed them at the well of beth Echad. None of them escaped. When Jehu left there, he met Jehonadab, son of Rechab, who was coming to meet him. After they had greeted each other, Jehu said to him, Are you as loyal to me as I am to you? Yes, I am, Jehonadab replied. If you are, Jehu said, then give me your hand. So Jehonadab put out his hand, and Jehu helped him into the chariot. Then Jehu said, Now come with me and see how devoted I am to the Lord. So Jehonadab rode along with him. When Jehu arrived in Samaria, he killed everyone who was left there from Ahab's family, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. While Jehu was executing judgment against the family of Ahab, he happened to meet some of Judah's officials and Ahaziah's relatives, who were traveling with Ahaziah. So Jehu killed them all. Then Jehu's men searched for Ahaziah, and they found him hiding in the city of Samaria. They brought him to Jehu, who killed him. Ahaziah was given a decent burial because the people said he was the grandson of Jehoshaphat, a man who sought the Lord with all his heart. But none of the surviving members of Ahaziah's family was capable of ruling the kingdom. Jehu kills the priests of Baal. 
Then Jehu called a meeting of all the people of the city and said to them, Ahab's worship of Baal was nothing compared to the way I will worship him. Therefore summon all the prophets and worshipers of Baal and call together all his priests. See to it that every one of them comes, for I am going to offer a great sacrifice to Baal. Anyone who fails to come will be put to death. But Jehu's cunning plan was to destroy all the worshipers of Baal. Then Jehu ordered, Prepare a solemn assembly to worship Baal. So they did. He sent messengers throughout all Israel, summoning those who worshipped Baal. They all came. Not a single one remained behind. And they filled the temple of Baal from one end to the other. And Jehu instructed the keeper of the wardrobe, Be sure that every worshipper of Baal wears one of these robes. So robes were given to them. Then Jehu went into the temple of Baal with Jehonadab, son of Rechab. Jehu said to the worshippers of Baal, Make sure no one who worships the Lord is here, only those who worship Baal. So they were all inside the temple to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings. Now Jehu had stationed eighty of his men outside the building and had warned them, If you let anyone escape, you will pay for it with your own life. As soon as Jehu had finished sacrificing the burnt offering, he commanded his guards and officers, Go in and kill all of them. Don't let a single one escape. So they killed them all with their swords, and the guards and officers dragged their bodies outside. Then Jehu's men went into the innermost fortress of the temple of Baal. They dragged out the sacred pillar used in the worship of Baal and burned it. They smashed the sacred pillar and wrecked the temple of Baal, converting it into a public toilet as it remains to this day. In this way, Jehu destroyed every trace of Baal worship from Israel. He did not, however, destroy the gold calves at Bethel and Dan, with which Jeroboam son of Nebat had caused Israel to sin. Nonetheless, the Lord said to Jehu, You have done well in following my instructions to destroy the family of Ahab. Therefore, your descendants will be kings of Israel down to the fourth generation. But Jehu did not obey the law of the Lord, the God of Israel, with all his heart. He refused to turn from the sins that Jeroboam had led Israel to commit.